the chat. Rapid reproduction. I want to release that word over you right now. Rapid reproduction. Rapid reproduction. In the era of Holy Spirit, there is rapid reproduction rapid. So the words that I'm speaking, Pastor Michael Culpert, I'm on my way back down there. Evangelist Conway, Barama Smith. Good morning, Renee Elizabeth. Rapid reproduction. Barbara Dean, God bless you, baby. Glennis Anderson Duncan, Cynthia Sane. Let's go from all over the world. Somebody right there. Rapid reproduction. Rapid reproduction. Now, in the era of Holy Spirit, things are accelerated. In the era of Holy Spirit, time is accelerated. Time is accelerated. Your learning curve, what you need to learn, what you need to know needs to be accelerated for rapid reproduction. Write that down and say it out of your mouth. Holy Spirit, I agree with rapid reproduction. Put it in your mouth. Open your mouth and say it. I agree. I set myself in agreement for rapid reproduction. Rapid reproduction of revelation is my sweet baby sister. Ruthie, God bless you. Rapid reproduction. Shirley Vaughn, rapid reproduction. Yvonne Fennessy, rapid reproduction. And so in the era of Holy Spirit, things are happening at such a fast pace. Things are happening. Go Things are happening at a very fast pace. And so you have got to be ready. You've got to be prepared for this rapid reproduction. The season, glory to God, sunrise, thank you. Don't forget these beautiful shirts. My God, thank you. The Leon Jones, yes, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 1984. Good God Almighty. Woo! <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. Yes, yes. Louise Heitch, B.B. Chambers, Pastor Gerald Folsom. Hallelujah. Rapid reproduction. And what is this? What does this mean? What does that mean? Rapid reproduction. Well, the things that Holy Spirit needs you to know, the things that Holy Spirit needs you to know will not always come through your normal streams of information. Praise God. Listen to me very carefully. And so God is sending mantles. God is sending people. God is sending information infrastructures in your life. I need somebody to hear me very carefully. God is sending information. God is downloading through your contact with people. God is restoring uh, all of the things that he promised to restore. Remember Acts 3.19, that all things have to be restored. We talk about the second coming of the Lord Jesus, but listen to me very carefully. That is not the next move. The next move is going to be the restoration of all things, all fivefold ministry gifts, all gifts of the Holy Spirit, all of the, of the things that the church over time has discarded. Those things have to be restored first. And then, because the Bible says that the heaven holds him back, that the heavens retain him until all of these doctrines, all of these practices, the apostolic and the prophetic, the authentic apostolic and the authentic perfect, pr prophetic must be restored by the spirit of God to the church before Jesus can return. There must be a great in gathering of souls. There must be a great outpouring, a great global harvest an influx of new converts and new growth that has to happen before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there must be rapid reproduction. Hey, good morning, Brother Yarnell. God bless you. Evangelist Robin, God bless you. Avery Chung, let's go, let's go. So God is going to send information to you. God is going to open up informational structures, informational access. God is going to give you everything that you need Glory to God in the era of Holy Spirit 
so that you can you can maximize your time left in the earth that you can maximize your time in the earth whatever time we all have left and we all have varying moments of departure where we'll begin to work with god on the other side well we'll begin to work with god on the other side right now we're on this side of the game but there is a day coming when each of us will leave this side and we will go to the other side and work with god on that side of the game glory to god until the full restoration and the full redemption of the earth Glory to Kahana Namashea. Is anybody hearing me? Rosalie, God bless you, Pastor Rita Bill. Come on, Quincy, let's go. Hey, Pastor Rod, Rod, Bishop Roderick Dallas, God bless you to you and your family. Hallelujah. And so the, the, the time that we have left in the earth, we have to maximize that time. And so there are going to be opportunities where Holy Spirit is going to bring people mantles in your life that will cause you to rapidly reproduce to get to a place of optimum productivity of optimum productivity you're struggling some of you are in a space and god is healing all trauma god is healing all pain god is healing fear God is healing you because you are moving into a place of rapid reproduction. And so whatever has held you back, whatever has caused you to, uh, to derail, whatever has happened in your life, grief, trauma, divorce, death, whatever has happened, Holy Spirit is sending the help mantles are falling is anybody hearing me right now mantles are falling and so now we do not have the time to learn learn we're going to have to glean we're going to have to glean there's going to have to be impartations glory to god so there will be rapid reproduction and the way God does things is by human participation, human engagement. Mantles are falling. Good morning, Cathedral. Good morning. Rapid reproduction so that there will be supernatural moments where you are going to be able to hear something, to get access to something that you normally would not have had access to. Glory to God. Come on, like, tag, and share. Like, tag, and share in the name of Jesus. God is sending supernatural destiny boosters and destiny helpers. This is not going to cost you money. This is not, this is something totally different. You may still need a coach. You may still need a business coach. You may still need a person who is in your particular uh, uh, mountain of influence to walk you through. But there's mount, there are mantles that God is sending for rapid reproduction. Glory to God. And what we have to begin to do is prepare ourselves for these encounters that we are asking Holy Spirit, make me visible, make me visible, praise God, and then increase my discernment so that I will know that this is a destiny helper, that this is a destiny booster. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, April. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Shannon. To my beloved children, destiny boosters, destiny helpers, people who will ignite uh, and accelerate your learning curve. Who am I talking to in the name of Jesus? Glory to God. I'm not shaky by the Asia. Come on in and like, tag, and share. You want to make sure that you are causing yourself to eliminate biases, to cause yourself to trust again, 
cause yourself to engage people in conversations, engage conversations, engage in encounters, because you never know, praise God, who is going to catapult you and accelerate your learning curve, my God. Now, I need you to hear this very carefully because as we move into the season of mantles falling, as we begin to move into the season of mantles are falling, and I'm liking tagging and sharing, <laughs> that as we are moving into that season, uh, you are going to have to grow up. You're going to have to be able to uh, not be so uh, persnippity. You're going to have to be able to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit like never before. And you're going to have to increase your discernment. One day, one encounter, one moment, one, one introduction can be a door, a door opener, can be a game changer for you. Glory to God. Because usually we don't operate outside of the norm of, of, of the familiar. Usually we don't operate outside of our familiar spaces. Usually the information we need does not always come in that particular space. And so we have to allow Holy Spirit to send, praise God, destiny helpers. But you're going to have to grow up. You're going to have to allow Holy Spirit to heal you. Praise God. Not putting no pressure on anybody, but you don't want to miss the era of Holy Spirit. Now, when we're talking about advancing beyond our present truth. Somebody write that down. In the era of Holy Spirit, you must advance beyond your present truth. Glory to God. Wow, wow. Woo, glory. Shine out on my sea. Mantles are falling. <laughs> you must advance beyond your present truth. Somebody write that down as you're coming up the timeline. Glory to God. You must advance beyond your present truth. Now, listen, I want to welcome everyone that's coming for the first time. Mother Pearl, those of you that are bringing people in, God bless you. Those of you that are watching the replay from all over the world. Glory to God at multiple times and in different time frames around the world. Listen to me very carefully. You must advance beyond your present truth. Good God Almighty. Woo, shanta by my seed. Woo, you must advance beyond your present truth. Now, in the era of Holy Spirit, glory to God, you are going to experience knowledge, information, revelation, truth, that you will be able to advance beyond your present truth. You must advance beyond your present truth. Whoa, somebody put that in the chat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You must advance beyond your present truth. You have to advance beyond the truth that you now know. You must advance beyond your present truth. And usually... Uh, uh, the, 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 the way in which we are connected to our churches, to our families, to our networks, uh, the way in which we are, we are connected does not afford us the opportunity to advance beyond our present truth. The way in which I'm Baptist, born Baptist, Born Baptist, drank Baptist milk, sat at Baptist tables and ate Baptist food. I'm Baptist. And the truth that I now share with you did not come to me through my church or my denomination. All right. You got to hear what I'm saying to you. And I get, uh, you know, I want to be committed to my church and to my bishop and to my denomination and to my uh, polity and to my, you know, my, my, my doctrines. I, I, I want to, you know, I get that. I, I'm not here to, I'm not here to say anything about where you worship or what you believe. I'm not here, but I am saying in the era of Holy Spirit, 
you must advance beyond your present truth. That is what I'm saying to you right now. You must advance beyond your present truth. If you don't advance beyond your present truth, you're going to be stuck in a frame, in a mindset. You're going to be stuck in a way in which you view the world that may not be relevant to what Holy Spirit will need you to accomplish. I know that was a big statement, but you need to hear what I'm saying. And this is why we've been given the Holy Ghost. We've been given the Holy Ghost. Jesus pours out his spirit so that we are not stuck in a frame, so that we are not stuck. I have people, and I don't even know why I'm going to share this with you. I have people that say, oh, you know, uh, pastors that say, I would invite Bishop Fawn to my church, but they're not ready for her. Listen to what that says. That says that only your doctrine can inform your parish and that God has nothing else that he wants to share with the people in your care, whether it's your ministry group, your business group, your book club, whatever. But I'm specifically talking to senior leaders who have avoided Bishop Carletta Vaughn who say, oh, no, I, uh, I just, uh, uh, no, I, I love her. And she, I know she has a word, but my people are just not ready for her. Why would you want them to advance beyond the truth that you've given them? This is so ludicrous to me. Why would you want, oh, I just love Bishop. Yeah, I watch her, you know, but my people, I would bring it to the church. I would bring it to my organization. I would bring it to the convocation. I would bring it, but you know, our people, I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know if they're ready for her or not. Really? <laughs> and what you are saying is that your people, your people in your care, should not be exposed beyond the truth in which you've given them. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> what you scared of? What are you scared of? This is the craziness that, that prevails in the body of Christ, that only the truth my denomination provides, that only the truth that my organization provides is the truth that I need to walk in. And this is, this, this is crazy. And it happens all the time. It happened. I'm, I'm just saying right now, I probably couldn't take all of the engagements because it's only 52 weeks in a year. And I still do pastor a local church and oversee a network of churches. But the, it amazes me when bishops and pastors and apostles and overseers, they're, they're fighting to teach. They're fighting to give information. They're fighting. But their present truth has limited them in terms of what they will share with their congregants, with their parish. And so God has destiny boosters. God has mantles. God has people that can take your church beyond the present truth in which you have taught them. Because the truth of it is most people will not advance beyond their pastor's restoration of truth. Most people will not, will not advance beyond their denominational truth. Most people will not. Bishop said, oh, she's a bishop, but you know, I don't go over there to her church. No, because you are not looking for new truth. You don't expect Holy Spirit to give you anything beyond what you know. So you just keep going back and forth with what it is that you have already learned. And that is the sad thing about it. That is the sad reality. And this is why people are not growing because they have limited themselves to their leader's truth or their denomination's truth. And so Holy Spirit, in order to get you where you and I have to go, will send mantles, will release mantles, glory to God. Woo, Woo, 
because uh, you must advance beyond your present truth. Now, if leadership is stuck, you are too. And, and I see this all the time where people are saying, well, you shouldn't go over there and, you know, uh, Bishop Vaughn and, you know, this your church and, you know, and I, I get all of the fear, control and manipulation. Oh, I don't know if I can afford. I don't know this. I don't know that. No, what you are afraid of is your people advancing beyond the truth that you know. That's what you're afraid of. Glory to God. <laughs> And so people then will move outside of you to get truth. And that's why people come beyond your church to our church, to our events, because they are, they are looking for truth to be, to take, for, for Holy Spirit to take them beyond their present truth. And that's why mantles, mentors, that's why God sends apostles. That's why God sends authentic apostles. Glory to God. Some of you are on here right now and I'm talking directly to you. There's no, no shame in my game and no shame. But your church would be a much better church if you were not afraid of new truth, if you were not afraid of apostolic deposits, if you were not afraid, you'll come, but you won't bring your people. You'll expose yourself. And then they're, they're stuck where you were before. Glory to God. I'm talking to somebody today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and so when you get to that place, glory to God, that you start looking at price then you devalue the cost of truth. Oh my God. So listen, what God will do and is doing in the era of Holy Spirit is he is causing rapid reproduction. Some people are outgrowing their pastors. They're outgrowing their shepherds. They're outgrowing their denominations. They're outgrowing their local denomination or church. They're outgrowing it because they recognize that they must move beyond present truth. Glory to God. Woo, shakamamasiya. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. And so what happens, praise God, as a general rule, is that people are, are stuck. People are stuck. People are stuck. How many people get on here every day and say, I never heard anything about mantles like this. I never heard anything about Holy Ghost like this. And why? Because you were walking in truth, but not advanced truth. Now, that's because you limited yourself or you were stuck in a space where you didn't even know that you were not walking in present truth. So how does God remedy that? Glory to God. Tracy, God bless you. How does God remedy that? He sends mantles. He releases people in your space. He releases people. He releases uh, uh, relationships. He releases people that will come to accelerate your learning curve. This is scripture. Expire truth, good God Almighty. Woo, child. <laughs> Woo, and you didn't even know you were stuck. You didn't even know you were speaking in tongues, but you didn't know truth. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hot Shia. And so when we look at uh when we look at the the pericope between Elijah and Elisha. I have to go back and say that very possibly Elisha was ordained to be a prophet, but he would have never excelled. He would have never excelled to the degree in which he could carry a double portion of Elijah's spirit if he had not received the mantle of Elijah. I am very, very clear that what I knew as a girl growing up in the Baptist church, 
I knew, I knew Sunday school. I knew the books of the Bible. I understood vacation Bible school and Baptist training union, but I was not walking in advanced truth. Now, my assignment as an apostle born in my mother's womb, uh, glory to God, would have never been fulfilled had I not had certain mantles that were given to me. Some were given to me by proxy because Amy Simple McPherson had been gone a long time by the time I got to Los Angeles Temple. But I walked in that space. Hey, I got every tape I could. I can remember sitting on the floor with my father in the TV room watching Catherine Kuhlman. He would come and get me. Glory to God. Time out. Woo! He would come and get me and say, come on, baby. It's time for our show to come on. And Catherine Kuhlman would come on. And I was too young to, to cognitively understand but i was still absorbing the mantle of holy spirit and when i go back and listen to her i'm amazed at the similarities and the things in which she shared and i never met her but the mantle fell i would have never known i would have never known i remember watching all roberts breathe on people and lay hands on people. Woo, glory to God. My daddy would watch that. Jack Cole would come on. My God. And uh, oh my God. And those mantles, I'm sitting there as a little girl, but I don't know that these are destiny boosters. And certainly as a Baptist girl, I would have never been a bishop. 26, seven years now, I would have never understood the episcopacy i would have never understood full authentic apostolic ministry if there had not been an encounter on an elevator in tulsa oklahoma at the hilton hotel so I, this is why i'm able to tell you this i'm able to share i'm able to teach people say oh my god bishop you teach every day and you never run out no the mantles accelerated my learning curve. Woo, Shaka Mamasia. God is sending to you mantles. God is sending people. Some will be brief encounters. Some will be long-term relationships. Some will be mentors. Some will be coaches. But God is sending mantles for rapid reproduction in your life so that you can maximize the time you have left in the earth. Woo, Shakama. Who am I talking to somebody? Woo, Shakama Mateo Sa. So we must be careful how we entertain strangers. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 15. For though you may have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Look at verse 16. Therefore, imitate me. Good God Almighty. Woo! Shakama Masia. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we, when we look at Elijah and Elisha, let's go back there. Let's go back there because I want to show you something from the scriptures. I want you to see in the era of Holy Spirit why it is so important that you connect. Why it is so important that you that you get beyond your present truth. Woo, because your assignment is you cannot fulfill. You're not fully equipped. And some of y'all act like you're scared of stuff, like you're scared of people, like you're scared of new truth. I got good girlfriends and they preachers, but they don't fool with me. <laughs> and they think I don't know. They don't fool with me. They don't invite me to any of their things. They don't invite. They got the same little group of folk that preach every year. They don't invite me to stuff. Because they don't want anything beyond their present truth. And I used to kind of get my feelings hurt, you know. I would say like, now nah, they want to come uh, to my stuff, but they don't ever invite me to their stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. 
Okay, I get it. Because their present truth is all they want. They want somebody to come and stir in that same pot of soup. They want someone to come and add a few onions, add a few carrots, add a few peppers and, and celery, but don't don't put on a new pot and and start cooking something else. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. We just want you to come and we just want you to put in a, a, a look. Go ahead and put in some potatoes, but work on this pot of soup, but don't come and put on a new pot with stew in it. Don't come in with no oxtails. Don't come in with no short ribs. Just work with the pot of soup that we already been boiling for a hundred years. <laughs> Woo, shaka mama hata. <laughs> so they invite the same people. They invite the same, and I get it. I used to get my feelings hurt because they, oh, Bishop, you you having some, you, you gonna invite me in? And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I can. But they don't invite me to none of that stuff. And I get it. I understand it because they don't want to advance beyond their present truth. Woo, Shaka Mamasia. Listen, let's go back over to 1 Kings right quickly. Oh my God, I'm teaching so good. I done got out of time. Woo, glory to God. Let's go back over to 1 Kings, praise God. And we see where the mantle is dropped on Elijah. We see where now uh, Elijah takes off his garment and he puts it on Elisha. First Kings 19 and 19. So Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. <laughs> Oh God, oh God, oh God, hallelujah. Oh my God, my God, my God, oh, oh. hallelujah. And because of the potentiality. Uh, now, Elisha was farming. He didn't have any idea uh, of his prophetic future, but it was a mantle that shifted, shifted his direction. Now, when you go over to 2 Kings, Let's run over there and you begin to see their journey as they begin to come together, as they begin to walk together. Now, Elijah doesn't tell us between one and two how much time it was, but now we see Elijah preparing to leave the earth. And now we see Elijah taking Elisha through the various steps of maturation. So he goes to Gilgal, the place of the cut, the place of the circumcision. He then takes him to Bethel, chapter number two, verse two. And Bethel is the place where he revisits God, but from his lenses. And then he takes them as he moves forward to Jericho, verse five. And Jericho is where walls, where now Elijah makes sure that Elisha, is free from anything that could have him in bondage, from any trauma, from any challenge. So now he makes sure that all the walls, Jericho, Jericho, that he can hear, that he can obey, that he can follow instructions, that he doesn't rethink. Y'all know the story of Jericho. Walk around seven times and don't say nothing. And on the last time, shout, let's make sure uh, Elisha, that you can obey instructions. And then he takes him across the Jordan. Look at verse eight. So Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was that when they had crossed, that Elijah said to Elisha, what may I do for you before I'm taken away? And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked the hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so 
for you, but if not, it shall not be so. Now, watch this. <laughs> Glory to God. After Elijah was taken away, watch this in verse 12. Elisha saw when Elijah was taken away, they were still in covenant. They were not offended with each other. They were still walking in agreement. So the mantle falls, glory to God. And so Elisha, he took off his clothes and put on the mantle of Elijah. Now, verse 13, he took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, where is the God of Elijah? And when he also struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elijah, Elisha crossed over. Verse 15, 2 Kings 2, chapter 2, verse 15. Now, when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, watch this, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. Y'all trying to be independent. You're trying to be spontaneous. You're acting like orphans and misfits. Nobody's spirit rests on you. Nobody's spirit rests on you. And the same events, now you go ahead and we'll read it. We got time. We're going to take our time. We're going all the way to Pentecost. Now, if you read it, Elisha asks for a double portion. And guess what? The miracles, the signs and wonders of Elisha equal double of Elijah. The exact amount, but double. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Woo, glory to God. I'm a shot. Hallelujah. You don't have nobody's mantle on you. You're just running around trying to get all this information, trying to operate in a silo, trying to operate independent, running from hither to thither and producing nothing. You're going to run out because you're not going to produce nothing. Listen to me very carefully, folks. Mantles are to accelerate your learning curve. Mantles, that means relationships. That means you have to engage, Dr. Hatcher. You have to engage people that have truth you don't have. Stop being afraid of truth you don't have. Stop looking strange when, when people are brought in your life and they have truth you don't have. They've been exposed to things you have not been exposed to. This will not come through schoolings. This will not come through a uh, seminary. This will not come, although there is value and nobody can outschool me. I'm this, I am a perpetual student. But I'm telling you what it is that God needs to get to you. Hallelujah that you can advance beyond present truth is, is usually going to appear to you odd and strange. But you, 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 you have to understand that rapid reproduction, rapid re glory to God, what would have happened if Elisha had not received the mantle of Elijah? Listen, ain't no sense in me going somewhere and buying some fabric and trying to trying to make me a new mantle. Let me grab the mantle that falls. That's already proven. That's already proven. That already has grace. That already can operate. It has a proven track record. Why am I trying to sew my own mantle? Woo, shakaba. Woo, shakida amashea. <laughs> that man, pulled, he reached in his pocket, pulled out his card. He said, come to Nigeria. That mantle fell in that moment. Come to Nigeria. I said, I'm going to Kenya. I'm going to Kenya. He's in December. He said, come to Nigeria. 
that mantle. That was the first time I saw the dead raised. I would have never got that in school. I would have never gotten that. I would have never gotten that close. I would have never been able to see what I saw with a woman who had been pregnant for 16 years with a dead fetus give birth to a living baby girl. Where would I get that? What school would I sign up for that? Where would I see a million people in one soccer stadium and the gospel being preached with such power that people were being thrown over the fence? People were sitting up in the trees and they were getting healed as people through them lepers were walking. Where would I have gotten that information? Where would I have seen that? Where would I have been able to, to study raising the dead? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Woo, shakaba. <laughs> Sister Thea said, so saying when I came to camp meeting, never saw it. Where would you have seen it? Where would you have seen it? And so when God sends mantles, when God sends mantles to, to advance you beyond your present truth, stop trying to hang on to the tree that you are familiar with. Glory to God. The Bible says that Elisha, when Elijah threw his mantle, he said, wait a minute, <laughs> something just shifted in my life. And he went and burned the stuff, got rid of the oxen, glory to God, gave the money, gave the food, and went to follow this mantle. Folks, I'm here to tell you, there is rapid reproduction in the era of Holy Spirit. And at that very moment, at that very moment, at that very moment, the mantle when it fell. Now watch, if you go back to verse nine. So when it was, when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, no, I want to go to verse eight. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water and it divided. Now Elijah's gone. Elisha takes the mantle and goes back to the same Jordan. Now I've been to the Jordan goes back to the same Jordan, takes the mantle of Elijah and says, where is the God of Elijah? He strikes Jordan with the same mantle and the water parted. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And some of you all, you so skirmish. You're so you're too skirmish. You're too skirmish, and you and, and I'm praying for your healing. You're too skirmish around new information. You're too skirmish. You want to keep listen. When I got over there, and that man started raising the dead, I said, "Oh, <laughs> I, I said, oh, uh oh." <laughs> he started raising the dead. You raising the dead. You're raising the dead. I've been Baptist all my life. I ain't never seen nobody raised from the dead. I'm sitting in the prayer service at 5 a.m. with 10,000 people. I never saw that before. I never saw that before. I never saw children. I never saw children. I never saw babies. In, in church at 5 a.m. dressed for school and ready for prayer. I never heard the sound of 10,000 people praying at 5 a.m. What school would I enroll to get that? I never seen that. Never been exposed to the sound of that. Never seen it in my life. Never seen in a crusade. The lame walking, the blind eyes opening where people are screaming. I can see, I can see where people are saying, my ears are open, I can hear. I would have never been able in a million years at my age 
to be able to capture that, to be able to reproduce that. And Paul says, imitate me. Well, if you've never seen it, you can't imitate it. If you've never been in the same room with it, you can't imitate it. And you think that the maximum of ministry is preaching a good sermon. No, signs and wonders. People say, I, I would bring Bishop Paul, but you know, she cast out devil. People be vomiting all over my, my, my pews and all over, and people be screaming and, ah, oh, no, no, my people ain't ready for that. Why would you not want them to walk beyond present truth? That just blows my mind about how small-minded we are about the things of God. Now, Paul says, imitate me so you can have 10,000 instructors. You may have 10,000 instructors. Now, look around and, and God is going to begin. I'm speaking this over your life now, that these mantles are falling that God is sending what you need so you can imitate and you can accelerate your learning curve so that you can maximize the time you have left in the earth. We're going to leave on this side. And when we leave and go on the other side, we're going to work it from a different perspective. We're going to be working through different lenses. All truth will be revealed. All knowledge will be known and we will be operating at our optimum capacity. But until then, we need God to send mantles and mentors. But we got to be open. We got to be open to maximize our time left, folks. Glory to God. I, 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 was, I was in Mexico a few years back now and I got to kind of find out where I was. It's been maybe about eight or nine years. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, uh, you've got 30 years to complete your work. I said, whoa, really? I thought that was so kind of the Lord. So I said, well, can I get 35? He said, to complete the work. I was like, oh, okay. So I, I, I'm on a timeline. You on a timeline. We're on a timeline, folks. We're on a timeline. You don't have time to be scuffling and hustling and, and, and somewhere at, 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 at Diane's fabric trying to make your own mantle. So Holy Spirit, make me visible. Holy Spirit, glory to God, and help me. Glory to God. And not all mantles are ministry. God opened the door through a Reverend Pastor Billy Hall. My bucket list was to be in the presence of Ambassador Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton. I, I value the woman of God. And I said, God, I just want to, I want to know it. It's on my bucket list. I got Steve Harvey on there too. And God used Billy Hall. Got a desk. I could have never got in that space. I didn't have a key. I didn't have an email. I didn't have a phone number. Glory to God to get in that space. And I end up on her team as a media surrogate. I'm a Baptist preacher on CNN, on Fox, on uh, MSNBC. I'm on Essence. I'm in every situation. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm, what? What? That, that was a mantle. That was a mantle in government. That was a mantle. I'm walking in Costco's and a man by the name of Bishop Glenn Plummer, who I had known before for years, said, listen, sis, I, my son is getting ready to do this Preachers of LA in Detroit. And I told him to get you on there because the producers want a woman. I could have never did that. A five-year contract with NBC Universal. I could have never did that. That was a mantle. And that mantle caused me to be able to walk into a room with Hillary Clinton and change the trajectory of what it was she was doing and saying. That same mantle caused Michelle Obama, Barack Obama to be tweeting about our show. That same mantle caused me to run for the school board and win. 
that same mantle, glory to God. Woo! Shande de Bahanda de Basia. Woo! Who am I talking to? You're not too old, but you got to be able to be open to your learning curve accelerating. Somebody say rapid reproduction. Woo! Shaka Mama Honda. Mantles are falling. You cannot be afraid of people. You cannot be afraid of new opportunities and new truth and new information. And I'm speaking to you preachers. My God, that's stuck in your denominational circle. That's stuck in your de denominational doctrines. Glory to God. Listen to me. You need something to help you accelerate your learning curve. If not, you're going to spend too much time trying to get information and you'll end up being stuck in a place where you're not mobile or relevant in the last day. Woo, Shantana Masia, who am I talking to? If you're a caterer, you need a mantle. You need a mantle. If you are in government, you need mantles. Wherever you serve and be open to cross-pollination. Be open to, to moving into more than one mountain. Be open. Your destiny, your assignment is not just limited to the church. You may be a Levite, glory to God, but you need a Gladys Knight. You need somebody that can drop a mantle, open a door, create a connection. Glory to God. Holy Spirit is causing in this season rapid reproduction. I speak it over your life now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Hashkete de Bahanda. Woo, Shakama Masia. Woo, Shakata de Bahanda. Woo, Shakababa. So that you can advance. You can advance and have spiritual experiences outside of your denomination, outside of your church policy, outside of what it is you know in your reformation. I would have never been able to be here. I would have never been able. I would have never been able to go here. And some of you, you tread lightly. You love me, but you tread lightly. <laughs> you tread lightly. You tread lightly because the truth that I have is going to upset your present truth. You tread lightly. You love me. You, you love being around me, but you tread lightly. And you fool around and miss the falling of a mantle because you don't want to move beyond your present truth. Oh, glory to God. Oh, some of you may never get to Africa. Some of you may never get to Nigeria. You mean that Papa's gone home. Archbishop Margaret now, she's walking in a in a bigger, wider stretch. My God. Oh, my God. But you may never meet her. You may never meet her. You may never get to a Nicholas Duncan Williams. You may never get to Ghana and to Kenya and to the 30 nations that I've been to. But the mantles are on my life. Stop being afraid of the truth you don't know. Stop being afraid of the truth that you don't know that your pastor doesn't teach you. Stop being afraid of present truth. And you don't have time to read every book. You don't have time to get every degree. So God is allowing mantles to fall. Woo, God, I give you glory. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. I cannot tell you, Isheba. I cannot tell you how many people have 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 shut doors for me. I get it because they say that people not ready for me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't tell you. I can't even count them all. But listen, don't you miss it. Don't you miss it. Don't you miss it. Don't you get afraid to advance beyond your present truth. And yes, there'll be some things that you'll have to dismantle. And yes, there'll have to be some confrontational moments. 
And yes, Gilgal is real. Bethel is real. Jericho is real. Jordan is real. Yes, there will be some moments where you'll have to discard what you have on. Yes, there will be moments, I hear you, Holy Ghost, Well, you have to take off what you know. Yes, there'll be moments in the new space, in the new realms that God will put you in. Yes, there will be moments where you will have to discard what you know, where you'll have to discard uh, what it is you've been taught and what you hold dear. Because when the mantle fell on Elisha, he had to take off all of his now non-relevant truth. He had to take it off to put on the, the new truth. And we don't want to do that. We want to hold on. We want to hold on. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, you got to be ready when the mantle falls that yes, there'll be some things that you felt dear and you felt so dear to your heart, but you'll have to take it off. You'll have to not walk in that anymore. You won't be able to preach that anymore. You won't be able to believe that anymore. You'll have to take some stuff off. Yes, that's the truth. But remember that the mantle is a double portion. A proven success. Proven ministry. Oh, I got to go. Woo! Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you access to us. Mm. Help me accelerate my learning curve. I got to go. Hey, listen to me very carefully. You do not want to miss this lesson. You do not want to miss this lesson on mantles and mentors. You don't want to miss this. Every day you you like tagging shit, go back and, and revisit this. You don't want to miss this. I believe that this is going to be last day truth that is going to change the trajectory of your life and help you to maximize the time you have left here in the earth. In Jesus name, pour out your spirit, God. Pour out your spirit. I got to go. Ooh, shakara mahanda.